वेलकम स्टूडेंट आई एम सी अरविंद तुली फ्रॉम द 96 सिक्स बैच यू नो आई बीन टीचिंग फॉर द लास्ट थर्टीन फोर्टीन ईयर्स बट दिस टूडे इज अ वेरी एक्साइटिंग न्यू फेज वी डेंट इवन रियलाइज दिस बट वेन स्टीव जॉब्स लॉन्च द एपल आई पैड ही एक्चुअली वॉज चेंजिंग द वर्ल्ड सो मेनी पॉसिबिलिटीज हैव टूडे ओपन अप यू आर यूजिंग your tablets you're using your mo for mobile phones and you're not using them only to make a call you're watching videos on them you're playing games in fact the tablet or the smartphone today has become so so important to us that we just can't think of life without it so obviously the next proper use of these tablets and iPhones will be more so this becomes a very exciting phase for education so welcome to the new age of teaching or learning now if you look at a cs problem today as a teacher i know as a student i have seen a lot of students coming to my classes traveling 1 hour 2 hours just to attend my class for 1 and 1/2 hours now a lot of time is spent a lot of money is spent then comes the problem of going to office every day you have to go to office 9 to 5 and then before that class you have to go for your tuitions before the office after office you have to go for tuitions there is very little time for self study so comes this absolutely unique idea instead of going to a classroom the classroom comes to you you have the tablets on the tablet you have all the lectures while you're traveling to work you're sitting idle in office no work to do kehte na vele baithe hain kuch kaam hi kar le so you study you listen to a lecture but obviously teaching is more than just a one way job it has to be two ways we have to kind of get this medium to get across to you as i want you to do because learning involves three things me communicating you understanding exactly as i want you to and then me as a teacher ensuring that you've understood whatever i want you to do so sirf padhane se nahi chalega it is not just going to work if i just deliver a lecture you should be allowed to not just raise queries you should be allowed to talk to me as well one on one so what we've done that we've divided it into phases the first phase is you listen to a lecture you could be listening to this lecture while traveling you don't have your notes in front of you doesn't matter every lecture that i take you will see the notes in front of you whatever text i'm going to be talking about is going to be here whatever i need you to remember whatever i need you to mark i will be marking for you i will be noting down whatever i need you to note everything and these files will be recorded in your tablet then when you reach home you will also have the hard copy of the notes with you so you will be able to mark exactly this by replaying the lecture if you want or if you are comfortable studying it online you have the option of the online notes as well then sometimes you know when i'm teaching you i'm going to be taking you through a very vast act it's the income tax act of india now in that act there will be a lot of sections lot of complicated things we talk about so for the papers and for the practical world there are two things a deep understanding of the subject and because it's law you need to retain the sections the provisions everything as well so i have to devise ways of not just communicating the same but also making you remember the same which we will be doing so the way it's going to work these notes you will be able to see you will be able to have to hear the lecture i will have done all these recordings but the notes are going to be very very elaborate to be able to explain to you i need to give you detailed text the law the analysis and sometimes we will also have charts to explain the same text 
But at the end of the day, when you are revising on the last day, we will not want you to go through the entire thing. So what we have done is, we have a summary for you. After every lecture, there will be a summary of that lecture. Which means the points, if you have understood, you will be able to just read the summary and recall. So if the notes end up into 7 to 800 pages, the summary might come up to only 150 to 200 pages, which then becomes revisable. Because ultimately, we have one aim. Not just to make you conceptually understand the subject, to ensure that you will be able to clear the paper as well. So, how have we planned this? We planned this, one is stage one, is the lecture you need to listen to. You need to have notes with you. There will be summary of every lecture notes given to you. After lectures, you will have MCQs, multiple choice questions, which you will need to clear. You will need to pass them. If you get your answers wrong, you will be able to see the answers over there. Then, there will be an exercise for you. You will be able to do the questions on the pattern of the paper. Now, let us have a look. As a CA final student, you have reached CA final. You know, we often ask ourselves, such a lot of hard work, is it worth it? Now, let us see. If a person started with CPT, let us say 100 students gave the CPT paper. Then, how many passed? Okay, let us take an average pass percentage of let us say 30 percent. So, 30 students cleared CPT. You know, you were one of them and you felt very happy when you did that. Then out of those 30 who appeared for IPCC, again the pass percentage is let us say 20 percent. That means 6 out of those 100 have reached the CA final level. You are one of them. You should feel very happy and proud of yourself. But the question is, how many from here actually become a CA? Are you aware that this profession, the institute, was founded in 1949, even before the Constitution of India was adopted? It has a long history. The government has placed a lot of faith in a chartered account. If you read the Income Tax Act, what is it? A person who has a turnover over 1 crore rupees is required to get a tax audit done. Now, who conducts the audit? The conducting of the audit is not by an MBA, not by a company secretary, not by a CWA, not by a lawyer, it's by a chartered accountant. That means the government is placing faith in you to go and check the accounts of the client and report to them what is wrong. Your stamp is required on a lot of certificates. Property kitni hai, uspe certification chahiye. Transfer pricing mein, there is a CA certificate required. So, the act, not just the Income Tax Act, the VAT Act, Excise Act, so many acts, every act places the responsibility on a chartered accountant. So, yes, the degree is worth it. This is the only degree that allows you the flexibility, okay, not the only, maybe one of the only degrees that allows you the flexibility, naukari karni hai, job karni hai, job karo, practice karni hai, practice karo. It allows you to be experts in not just one field, look at the world, you can be an expert in accounting, you can be an expert in auditing, you can be an internal auditor, you can be a statutory auditor, you can take up income tax as your expertise area, usi mein super specialization karo. And even in income tax, you have so many fields. You can be a non-resident expert. Today, there is a growing field of something called transfer pricing. You can be a transfer pricing expert. You can be an indirect tax expert. You can specialize in service tax, excise, customs. You can be super specialization in so many areas. You can go into the financial part of the organization. You can go into budgets forecast, so many lines, which other degree allows you the flexibility and then the job and the remuneration or I am sure most of us looked around 
and I do believe that a chartered accountant never really fails whether he's in his own line or in any other line this course will make you so strong it will inculcate discipline inside you self-study that you will end up doing well so let's see how many from here actually become CS the past percentage even if I take a good percentage of 20% leaves you with so if I look at the final past percentage out of 100 one becomes a CS no wonder that till date roughly around 2 lakh people have cleared this course but those 2 lakh people must have been doing well because today there are almost 11 lakh students as per our president's speech doing CA at the moment yes there is competition yes it's tough but then there's that famous saying when the going gets tough the tough get going and I have a very uh, you know important saying that I would like to share with you you know my teacher gave this to me when I was very young it's a saying that goes little by little an hour goes by little by little a day little by little you reach your goal or let it slip away nothing happens overnight chote chote steps dheere dheere agar hum aram aram se if we can slowly keep doing everything understanding it keep working hard put your head down then trust me nothing is difficult if you've made up your mind to do CA you will become a CA but at CA final level as I said there must be this internal desire to learn I'll share with you a story uh, which is a very uh, interesting story as far as I am concerned this is a story about Socrates uh, the famous philosopher from history now Socrates ke pass one day a student goes so he says Socrates you are such a famous philosopher you are such a learner teacher teach me everything you want and I will learn now Socrates obviously with all his vast experience understands this desire this anxiety this hurriedness to learn everything cannot be satisfied by someone else it has to be satisfied by you so Socrates what he does is he takes the student and he walks with him to the riverbed then he holds the neck of the student and goes into the river he keeps going the water climbs and the water climbs more now the student is wondering what is wrong with Socrates I will die like this and then Socrates holds his head and puts it under water for a minute the student thinks maybe this is the way he learns maybe he is a great philosopher he knows what he is doing and then the student realizes I am going to drown then the student struggles, kicks but Socrates is strong, he holds him there and then the student suddenly thinks now Socrates takes him to the riverbed gets him to get up and the student is very angry, he says what the hell was this Socrates? what were you doing? what were you thinking? and then Socrates says he says when your desire to live sorry when your desire to learn is as much as your desire to live or you will learn because remember no teacher can teach you anything unless you are ready to learn so I like the wordings uh, which Socrates has used at times I will show you one of them he says I cannot teach anybody anything I can only make them think so my dear student my job over here is to raise questions in your mind and help you find the answers and in this journey hopefully we will enjoy the subject that we are doing so after having said that let's now see what our level of preparation is going to be you know let me compare this to something like a subject like maths you did your maths right through school you did it in class 7th you did it in 8th 9th 10th maybe some of you even did, did this maths in 11th and 12th now tell me the subject was mathematics but was the level different now if I look at income tax the first time they teach you this income tax act 
is an IPCC. But in the IPCC, all they teach you is the calculation of total income. They do not teach you interpretations. They are not preparing you in IPCC to handle complicated queries. They are only giving you a good brief idea and intricate knowledge yet not complete. So in CA final, let's have a look at the syllabus given to you. If you look over here, it says to gain expert knowledge. I like you to less stra uh, lay stress on the word expert. To gain expert knowledge of the provisions of direct tax laws. To acquire the ability to apply the knowledge of the provisions of laws to various situations in actual practice. Become an expert. Because children, the moment you become a chartered accountant, people come to you not because of you, but they come to you because of those two alphabets before your name. They come to you for those two alphabets, C, A. You are no longer an individual. You now belong to a fraternity. I will give you a simple example. Somewhere, uh, this is in uh, my city, about 4-5 years back, there was a kind of a fraud. What a chartered accountant uh, brother did, he defrauded the income tax department by taking falsified refunds, fabricated returns filed and he took returns, refunds to the tune of 2 crores. Not something we are proud of. But I remember the headlines in the newspaper the next day. The headlines did not have his name. The headline says, Chartered Accountant Commits Fraud. I started getting calls from my friends. They started me, Achha, now you are committing frauds as well. Now just in a lighter vein, there was another incident I remember. There was another headline in the newspaper which said, Chartered accountant murders his wife. And now my wife is looking at me as if I am going to murder her as well. But the idea is you no longer are individuals. You are not going to be known by your name. Before your name there are two alphabets. And you belong to a fraternity of chartered accountants. To be reaching there, to be able to reach there, you need to be able to earn that degree. Respect it. Respect the degree. It will get you a lot of respect. Understand to reach there, you just not have to pass the papers, you have to understand because tomorrow there are going to be clients asking you questions. Sir, should I form a company? Should I form a firm? Should I form a proprietary concern? Sir, am I required to pay service tax? Sir, am I required to pay excise duty? Sir, am I required to get a tax order done? Sir, how do I form a company? Sir, what is my service tax? And whatever you say, they are going to believe. And why are they going to believe it? Not because they trust you, because they trust these two alphabets before your name. That is why, my dear friend, the institute says, these are alphabets of trust. So take your words seriously. Take your words seriously, I said. Whatever you say, think because there might be somebody believing you so much, he might actually go and invest crores of rupees based on your advice. So, in the next year, while you are learning these subjects, don't think you are learning them just to pass. You are learning these provisions because in the practical world, you are going to be giving them advice. And one of the most common or one of the most important acts, I believe, is the Income Tax Act. Sabko farak padta na uska. Jeb se tax jayega. Log, people will have to pay tax money. They want to save. Now we will not give them advice of tax evasion. Tax evasion means you are not disclosing the income. Wrong. But if you understand the subject well enough, you can reduce the tax of the client. Which we will be talking about during the course. So what did he say? To gain expert knowledge and to apply this knowledge to practical situations.
and the syllabus is very simple the income tax act 1961 so it does not give you a defined syllabus your syllabus is the entire act now let us see how to read the act let's ask a few questions here we need to read not just the act we need to also read the rules we need to read something called circulars we need to read notifications and then there are judgments of various courts tribunals but before we start reading all of this we need to understand how the system works so let's pick up the first one what is an act what are rules who makes the rules what are circulars what is the relevance of a circular why do we have notifications and what are the judgments and what is the relevance of the judgments so the first lecture the second lecture and the third lecture are what i call pre class abhi maine padhana shuru nahi kara i have not started teaching you first i have to prepare your brains to understand the words i'm going to be using so in the first three lectures i'm going to explain a few terms which if by now you've been practicing well you will know a bit if you've been doing your training seriously you will know a bit of them but yet i would want you to understand them as clearly as i want you to so that once i start talking about business head house property head returns of income transfer pricing you're not confused as to the overall picture we call this mind maps so i'm going to create a map in your mind of the act so that we know exactly where we are going now let's start with an act a simple story what is an act how many acts do we know of service tax act okay vat okay income tax act of course yes of course you have the excise act customs act then you have the sale of goods act you have the negotiable instruments act you have the contract act you have the partnership act you have the companies act you have so many acts kyun why so many acts what is the purpose of an act who makes the act okay let's take a small example let's go to your own home i'm sure a typical indian family is you have the father you have the mother and you have the two kids let's take an ideal family here one son and one girl boy and one girl now we all know at home there are so many rules time pe ghar aana come home at time some parents might have a time of let's say 8 pm cut off some parents might say 10 pm some might even go to the central 2 am in the morning we have different rules with different parents so you might have an 8 pm cut off maybe your friend has a cut off of 10 pm that means each set of parents so now let's see what happens when this family grows now your family other additions you are married then you have children so let's assume over generations this family becomes a big family children and their children and their children obviously it, i'm not saying it's happening in one lifetime it happens over a period of time now how would this head ensure that the entire family follows the rules they want because these guys the head is responsible for running the house and they have full control they want to have full control what do they do now so if they gather the family and they give them the rules orally it's not going to work for example you know i tell you okay beta your cut off time is 8 o'clock 
Now what you do is you understand what I am saying but use your own discretion. So I am suppose the head of the family and this is you. So you have been told 8 o'clock is your cut off time. So at night at 8 p.m. I am waiting, the head is waiting, you are not there. You don't come throughout the night. And then in the morning at 7.59, you walk in. The head is angry, he says, you are supposed to be here before 8. And you turn around and says, look, it is still not 8. I am here before 8. So ob obviously, what the head wanted you to understand was 8 p.m. But you assumed it's 8, so it could be 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. Now that is what is going to be confusing if the rules are not very clear. So what the head might do is then think of what he wants you to understand. He might write down the rules. And he will then visualize if he says 8 o'clock, he must specify 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. And then he will keep thinking of these things and the book will keep becoming bigger, thicker, and he will write it down and pass it to the family for them to read and understand. Now the entire family might not read the book. So he might authorize a few people. He might say, okay, you will read the book. And then if any one of these people have a doubt regarding any point in the book, they will come and ask you. Then he might authorize more people. He might say, okay, you read, he might have different books now. One book on the rules of the timings, one book on the rules of how money will be put in the house, one book on the rules of how the expenditure will be incurred and so on. Just giving an example. Now if I take this family as our country and I take this head as the government of our country, then these books that they have written are called the Acts. And these people authorized over here could be a chartered accountant, could be a lawyer, could be a CS, could be a CWA. Each one authorized to read a different set of books. For example, the CA is more concerned with the financial running of the organizations, taxation angles. So he is asked to read Income Tax Acts, Excise Acts, Customs Act. The lawyer is more concerned with the other uh, legalities, the Property Acts, the Criminal Acts and so on. So what is an Act? It is a set of rules. Why are there so many Acts? Because the rules regarding service tax con pay karega, who will pay service tax is written in the service tax book. And it's another story, we will learn that there is no separate service tax legislation. We will do that. Why is there an income tax act? Because who will pay income tax is another set of rules. What is an excise act? It's another book with another set of rules. Those rules tell us who will pay excise duty and so on. So if I ask you, the contract act will tell you who can sign a contract? You know, you've all read the Contracts Act. Let me ask you a question. Can a minor sign a contract? Think? Your answer should be no. Because as per the Contract Act, the minor has not been given the authority to sign a contract. The Contract Act says, every person competent to contract and then defines the person competent to contract as an individual of sound mind, not being a minor and a separate legal corporate entity being a company which can sign a contract. So can a minor sign a contract? No. Why? Because the rules given by the government of who all can sign a contract, you know when you sign a contract you should understand what you are signing. So a person of unsound mind, a minor, these guys are still not there to understand. So they cannot sign a contract, they have not been given. So once a 17 year old student asks me, sir, I can sign the contract, why are they saying I can't sign a contract?